you you had nine nine years there, or eight years, 2011 to 2019, before you quote unquote blew up. Yeah. But take us through some of the down moments, some of the moments. I'm sure there were moments where you're like, "Is this really for me? Did I make a mistake? Mm-hmm. Should I go mm-hmm. back?" What were you thinking in those down moments? Because I think that could really help someone listening or watching this podcast. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so let let me. I've sort of touched on this, but let let me frame this properly, just to just to let people know what this trajectory was like. Okay, so I I studied computer science at Oxford University, one of the best universities in the world. Um, I graduated when I was twenty. Okay, <laughs> I'm someone who this isn't me trying to be cocky, but like. There's a lot of things I could do in the world, right? If I wanted to be an investment banker or like a Silicon Valley dude or whatever, like those are legitimate options open to me. Those are what my peers went off to do, right? You know, I I know people who went off and founded companies in Silicon Valley or who are now um, MPs in the British Parliament. These are guys in my own grade, right? In my own class, like who are now doing this, who are now doing all these different things. So that's like, you know, where you're sort of coming from in that regard. And I was a management consultant. I worked for, you know, a big, well-known global company. I won't, I won't name drop them. Um, And I was on a, you know, a trajectory for, you know, a great white collar corporate career, climb that ladder, you know, maybe become a senior manager or an executive and, you know, just make money, be comfortable, not change the world really in any significant way, but, you know, just be, be super comfortable and successful in the normal sense. And in 2011, I was like, you know what? I want to be a full-time independent rapper. It's worth considering like, this isn't, oh, I got signed to some big record label or someone put a lot of money behind me or something. It was like, you know, oh, this is just, you know, I'm going to leave this and I'm just going to hit the street and I'm going to promote my music, right? Um, So I went from suit and tie, you know, being in in, uh, meetings with JP Morgan and the London Stock Exchange and whatever, to literally being on the street with a backpack and my headphones talking to absolute strangers, just hawking my CDs, selling my CDs for like five pounds each, seven pounds each, et cetera. Um, And there were times when that was great, right? In the summer and there's lots of people out and I'm meeting all these like young people, teenagers, young adults, whatever. They're checking, they're digging my music. I'm making fans, taking photos, taking selfies with my fans, doing shows. That was great. But then you'd have times when it's like this time of year, it's December and I'm on the street in Manchester or Newcastle and it's snowing. Mm. I'm wrapped up with lo- multiple layers on and gloves and I've got my backpack of CDs and nobody wants to stop because it's dark and it's freezing and I'm still there trying to like sell my CDs and I'm thinking, geez, I, I used to like work in an office <laughs> and have a steady paycheck and I'm like, what? I, I, I'm an Oxford grad, like what am I doing? Like, why? why <laughs> Why am I putting myself through this? It's raining. It's snowing. Like, why am I even out here? Mm. I'm talking to people who, who like absolute strange, like, man, I had a lot of moments or for example, I'm touring, you know, when I did my very first tour, which I self-organized, um, you know, I've had gigs where five people show up, Mm -hmm. right? I've had a gig where three people showed up, right? Mm -hmm. So you travel all the way to a city. Imagine Imagine traveling like multiple hours to get to a city. You want to do the show and there's three people in the crowd. You've got, and then you've got like, there's more people who are working the venue than who are in the audience to see you. Wow. And, and, and most musicians have experienced this. Most musicians will not talk about this, but most musicians have experienced this, right? And it's just like, you know, and you still do the show. You still do the show. You still belt it out for an hour and you go hard and you make sure you take a photo with every single person there and you sign every CD and what, but like, man, you know, those are the times where you're just like, geez, man, what am I, what am what, what am I doing? Right. Is this, mm-hmm. is this going to work? Am I deluded? Like, am I just kind of like, you know, I've got this fantasy of, Oh, I want to be a rapper and whatever. Like, I think I'm dope. Like, I'm like, man, no, I'm listening to my music. Like, no, my music is good. You know, my fans like my music or whatever. Um, but the world just isn't hearing it. The world's not paying attention. Um, so there were a lot of moments like that, man. So you had the highs and the lows. It's just up and down, up and down over the course of many different years. But I always knew, I always knew, like I said, this was like God speaking to me. I always knew this is all preparing me for something in the future. Mm. And And that's part of why, sorry, to to add, to loop back around to something you asked me earlier, 
this is how I psychologically am able to handle this now. So I've already been through just just like just like I couldn't have lifted that 230 kg on my first day in the gym. If I'd blown up like this and had all this media attention or whatever five years ago, ten years ago, I I don't you know I wouldn't don't know what I would have done on. I don't mm -hmm. know what I would have done. Even this this podcast, this interview, I, I wouldn't have been able to articulate my 